Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Your Physics Meet. Well, in today's video, I have discussed some problems, not problems, some questions which are often asked during the Viva examination. And I think you will find today's video helpful. And these questions are on classical mechanics. And uh, yeah, these questions are often asked in during the practical examinations also. So yeah, those students who are going to give the practical examination as well as any kind of Viva examinations, I think this video help, will be helpful for those all. And uh, yeah, if you find today's video helpful, then please don't forget to like this video, share this video with your friends and please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I think your subscriptions gives me into to do more videos further. So yeah, please support me. And uh, okay, without a further delay, let's get started. Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel, Your Physics Meet. Well, from the introduction, you got to know that the purpose of today's video is to make you familiar with some Viva questions, which are often asked during uh, the practical examinations or even in other Viva examinations related to classical mechanics. Uh, this video is uh, made on the questions on based on classical mechanics and uh, these are for those students who are going to give the examination of BSc or any kind of undergraduate courses. Okay, so, so just start today's video with the first question. The question is, what do you mean by the moment of inertia? The answer is, when a body containing a number of point masses rotated about an axis, the moment of inertia of the body about the axis of rotation is I equal to mi ri square, where mi is the mass of the constituent ith particle and ri is the distance from the axis of rotation. The summation extends over all the constituent particles. That is, suppose I am taking here a body. It has so many point masses inside it, right? So we are, suppose we are taking this one is the axis of rotation about which the body is rotating. So suppose this is a particle, this one is one particle, this one is one particle, that way if it's the first particle, second particle, third particle, fourth particle, fifth particle, this way, this one is the ith particle. So, the, if the mass of this particle, this ith particle is mi and the distance of this ith particle from the axis of rotation, that is this distance, this distance is ri, then for this particle, for this particular particle, that is this ith particle or this ith particle, the moment of inertia I is mass of that particle that is mi into the distance between that particle from the axis of rotation that is ri square. And as we are, we have to consider here about the full mass or the full body. So here we have to consider all the masses we have taken here. That is this mass, this one, this one, this one. We have to take all them together. So we are putting here a summation and we are doing this summation over all the i's. That is the i is the number of masses which are concentrated inside the body, okay? So this one, this one was the first question. I think I have made you understand. And the second question is, what is the physical significance of the moment of inertia? So the answer is, the moment of inertia is analogous to mass and it represents the inertial property of the body for rotational motion. That is the role that mass plays in the case of translational motion, the same role plays the moment of inertia in case of rotational motion. Okay, So the mass plays the same role in case of translational motion. Which role plays? 
the moment of inertia in case of rotational motion. Okay, question number 3. What is the SI unit of moment of inertia? The answer is kg into meter square. Of course, mass into distance square. So, the unit of mass is kg and the unit of distance is meter. So, kg meter square. And if you have been given the CGS unit, you have to write it gram into semi square, right? Okay, number 4. Define the radius of gyration. What is radius of gyration? The answer is the radius of gyration of the body is the distance of a point from the axis of rotation where the whole mass of the body is assumed to be concentrated. That is if we think that the whole mass of the body is concentrated at a particular point then from that point the distance of that point from the axis of rotation is called the radius of gyration okay okay question number five what is the rigidity modulus the answer is it is the ratio of the shearing stress to the shearing strain within the elastic limit okay uh, question number six is what is torsional rigidity the answer is the torsional rigidity is the torque part unit I'm sorry, this is not part. The torque per unit twist. So, the torsional rigidity is the torque per unit twist of the suspension wear. That is, when you are going to measure the torsional rigidity of a uh, wear. Uh, about which the body is just oscillating that is the oscillating cylinder suppose so the torsional rigidity for that oscillating cylinder is the torque per unit twist of the suspension wear about which the body is oscillating right okay question number seven what is the theorem of parallel axis for moment of inertia well i have done a separate video on this topic that is the parallel axis theorem and I also have discussed some of the problems in that video. I will uh, give the link in the description box as well as, uh, as well as in the i button. So, please go and watch that video if you want to know elaborately about this. Anyways, in this video here I have given you a definition. So, what is the parallel axis theorem? The answer is this theorem states that the moment of inertia of the body about an axis is equal to the moment of inertia of the body about the parallel axis passing through the center of mass of the body plus the mass of the body multiplied by the square of the distance between the two axes. Uh, so, I am just going to draw a picture to make you understand this suppose this one is a body okay and uh, suppose you have been given a, an axis here you have been given an axis here and you have to measure the moment of inertia of the body about this one axis so the moment of inertia of this of the body about this axis is the moment of inertia of this body along the axis suppose this one is the center of gravity of this body so the axis passing through the center of gravity is this one and suppose the moment of inertia about this uh, axis is i1 and suppose this one is the center of gravity of this body then the axis passing through the center of gravity uh, about this axis the moment of inertia is I1 and the other one about which we have to uh, measure the value of moment of inertia is suppose I then uh, and the distance between these two axes if is R then in this case uh, the amount of moment of inertia of the body about any axis or about the axis is the moment of inertia of the body about the parallel axis passing through the center of mass that is this one right which one is i1 plus there is this axis this axis plus 
plus the mass of the body multiplied the by the square of the distance between the two axes. Suppose the mass of the body is m and the distance between these two body is distance between the two axes is r. I have see, uh, just drawn a picture here. So, the uh, I have to make an addition of this two which to the moment of inertia of the body about the axis which is passing through the center of mass plus the moment uh, plus the mass of the body multiplied by the square of the distance between the two axes that is m into r square. So, the i which one we had to perform before is equal to i1 plus m r square where i1 is the axis which is passing through the center of mass of the body plus m is the mass of this body and r is the distance between these two parallel axes. Okay. Okay. Now question number 8. What is compound pendulum? So the answer is the compound pendulum consists of a rigid body of any shape capable of oscillating under gravity in a vertical plane about any horizontal axis passing through it. Okay. Again, I am repeating it. A compound pendulum consists of a rigid body of any shape and it is capable of oscillating under gravity in a vertical plane about any horizontal axis passing through it. Suppose it has like it is a, it is like any kind of rigid body which is capable of oscillating under gravity and it has an axis passing through it which is horizontal okay so it is uh, capable of oscillating about an axis which is passing through it in a horizontal plane right suppose this one is a body so this one is a compound pendulum how can we show that this one is body of any shape and it is oscillating about suppose this this is suppose the horizontal axis you can see the horizontal axis and it is just oscillating this way right so, this is a kind of compound pendulum. It has any kind of a shape which is a rigid body of course. That is the distance between the two points is fixed inside it and it is oscillating about an horizontal axis. This, this axis is horizontal right about this body. So, this one this kind of a thing is compound pendulum. Question number 9. What is the simple equivalent pendulum? So, the answer is a simple equivalent pendulum is whose length a simple equivalent pendulum is whose length is such that its period or time period is exactly the same as that of a compound pendulum is called a simple equivalent pendulum that is the simple pendulum is whose length is such that its time period is exactly the same as that of a compound pendulum is called a simple equivalent pendulum Okay, and the final and or the last question of today's video is, will the time period of a compound pendulum be the same at all paces? The answer is no, because for the period depends on g. The time period for a compound pendulum depends on g. g is the acceleration due to gravity. This g is different at different places. As g changes due to uh, different places due to height g changes so that the compound pendulum for any compound pendulum the time period also changes if the places change basically it de depends on the altitude or the height of that place okay so as in different places the height is changed so g is also changed okay so this one is the last problem uh, which on uh, the last question I am discussing today okay so I think these are quite the questions which are uh, often asked in viva examination and I think you uh, could understand all the questions clearly and if you have any kind of problems or queries you can write that in the comment section below all the best for your coming examination and uh, okay bye